harm because of fat. And that, again, is an inevitable and well-recognized complication of chronic lymph malfunction. Well, it turns out that we have some treatment options to offer in this regard. This is a surgical technique. It's a, it is an adaptation of something that plastic surgeons do called liposuction, but specifically adapted so that the excess fatty material can be withdrawn from a lymphedema limb and restore it to normal size. So this is a patient that was operated on. This is her lymphedema arm prior to surgery. This is 15 years later. She has gone to a normal size limb that she acquired initially because of treating, treatment for breast cancer. And this is the fat that was removed from her limb at the time of surgery. Um, this surgery again was pioneered in Sweden by a friend and colleague named Håkan Brorsen. And um, through years of collaboration, we have imported, if you will, this surgery to Stanford and now do it here. I do it with a colleague in the plastic surgery department at Stanford. And this is an option for some of the patients that we see. Here's another patient who had an operation for this reason. This is a young man who had Hodgkin's disease, developed the lymphedema in his limb after the treatment of Hodgkin's disease, was very bereft over the fact that he couldn't wear a pair of jeans that he could buy in the Levi's store. Um, and couldn't live a normal life. But here he is uh, one year after the surgery and you can see that his leg has been restored to normal. As I said though, there is no cure for lymphedema. Uh, we can treat it and this surgery is one of the things we're excited about today moving into tomorrow. But I do wanna to talk to you a little bit about the research that we're doing in my laboratory and in my program because it is my belief that we should be able to get to the point that we treat lymphedema like we treat many other diseases, which is to say, with molecules, with drugs, by altering the biology of the individual to make the problem disappear, perhaps cured, or simply brought under control. And in order to do this, of course, we rely on our friend the mouse, who has the ability to show us how the molecular machinery of the body works and because the mouse's body works in many ways just like the human body we can learn a lot by looking at the mouse as an experimental model. So I've helped to develop a model that we've been using now for about six or seven years in which we create lymphedema in the mouse tail as a way to simulate what we see in the lymphedema patient which is that after surgical disruption of the lymphatics, there is the swelling beyond the point at which the lymph system has been destroyed. And that's exactly what we do in the tail. Here's where we make the incision. And you can see the swollen tail compared to a more normal one that has had simply a surgical incision into the skin of the tail without disrupting the lymphatics. And when we look in the tail, it's very nice in the mouse, we have this very beautiful honeycomb pattern of lymph vessels that we can study. We can study them under the microscope, we can study them dynamically, and we can study the molecular pattern. Well, I'm very happy to be able to say, and the details are not that important, I know you're not all anatomists, but um, as you do the, make the transition from normal human skin to lymphedema skin, there is a very predictable change that we see, the thickening of the outer layers of the skin, changes within the interior. And in the mouse, the changes look absolutely identical to what we see in the mouse, in the human. Therefore, we have great confidence that anything we study in the mouse is going to have some predictive value for the human disease. One area that we've been interested in is the notion that because we can understand how these vessels develop in the human body as the individual is born and, and goes through embryonic life, we might be able to capture the power of those same molecules and induce new lymph vessel growth in an adult person who has uh, the disease. And this is able to be done because we've now identified a whole host of growth factors in the human body and in the mouse body that indeed induces lymphatic growth. So we've done that in our model, and uh, not to belabor the details, but I'm showing you here one of our mice that was given lymphedema surgically, and you'll see that beyond the black mark where the surgery was initially done, the sit tail is swollen, so this is a lymphedema tail. Here is a mouse that had the same surgery, but was treated with the growth factor, and you can see that the tail 
actually return to a normal size. So with growth factor therapy, we can actually cure lymphedema, if you will, at least in the mouse. Um, we're very excited about this, and I do believe that we'll be moving into some clinical applications on this in the next two to three years. We've been busy trying to figure out what is the best growth factor to use. Uh, but it's not a panacea because many of the patients, as we said, are cancer survivors. And we're not entirely sure that it's going to be safe to give growth factors to cancer survivors because it might stimulate the growth of the original uh, cancer in some way that is not desirable. But just to show you how things work out in this model, here we've given a particular growth factor called VEGFC. Um, in the untreated mouse, the tail volume goes up very dramatically within about 10 days after surgery. Here are the normals down below. And if we give the growth factor on day three, we blunt the process from progressing any further and eventually the tail comes down to a normal size. Um, so having said that we may not be universally confident that the growth factor is going to be the right way to do this, we've actually been looking at alternative strategies, actually using drugs that will alter the biology of the lymphedema itself, but not be dangerous necessarily to a cancer victim. And here again, we've had some very nice success in the model where using clues that we've gotten from the studies in the mouse, we've been able to intuit which drugs might actually reverse the disease process. And these pictures are taken just days after the surgery, but you can already see that the treated mouse who's getting the drug systemically is beginning to resolve the lymphedema even at this early time point. And even more dramatically, when we look under the microscope, here's the normal mouse. And again, that thin skin layer on the outside, normal looking structures underneath. Here's an animal that gets surgery. We call it a sham because we don't actually interrupt the lymphatic vessels themselves. Looks indistinguishable from the normal. And here's lymphedema. There's that tenfold increase in the thickness of the skin. Lots of inflammation. These are big lymphatic channels that have dilated because of the obstruction upstream. When we give the drug that we use to reduce the inflammation, within seven days the inflammation is gone, but even more dramatically, the skin has returned to virtually its normal thickness, which gives us promise that we can actually reverse this disease state. Our working hypothesis is that when we use a drug to block inflammation, we actually break the vicious cycle that drives the lymphedema patient to develop more and more lymphedema because we are able to stimulate the restorative properties of the skin while blocking the negative consequences of inflammation. We've relied a lot in our work in a technique called microarray, which basically is a technique developed here at Stanford by Dr. Patrick Brown in which we can simultaneously assay 50,000 genes all at the same time. This is a microchip, and you can see an enlarged uh, portion of it here in the center. Every one of these dots is DNA from a specific gene. And by taking tissue specimens and deriving the appropriate molecules from them and overlaying them on the chip, we can tell gene by gene which genes go up in their activity, which go down, which stay the same. And that allows us to understand how the whole tissue is responding and using the genetic environment to orchestrate what is happening at the tissue level. We've done this in our model, and what we're very gratified to find is here's, here's the output of one such microarray. Uh, basically, out of the 50,000 genes that we assayed, only 240 actually change in a meaningful way when we treat with this anti-inflammatory therapy, meaning that we've already very closely targeted the pathways that we're interested in, and it gives us a lot of promise uh, for the future. So I always end my talks on lymphedema with this picture because I think it shows perfectly well, continues to show perfectly well where we are. We've accomplished a lot. We have a lot still left to accomplish. I want to end my formal comments with a few concrete suggestions about information about our program and also about resources uh, nationally related to lymphedema. We currently have four major clinical research trials going on.